Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my part of this weekend. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about a project which, in our team, we um, dealt with, we completed in the last two years. And the project is about uh, centralizing various types of resources over a variety of Joomla websites. Um, I'll start with the basics. Um, who am I? And what gives me the, the reason to believe I can stand up here and talk to you all about this? Uh, actually, some more people coming in. Um, I have been working in various forms and constellations with Joomla for about 10 years now. Um, I'm not one of those people that can proudly say they worked with it when it's called Mambo, but shortly after that. Um, and as a freelancer, working in various teams, and uh, since 2014 now, I've run an agency called Joomla Team. Uh, we are based in Munich and in Zagreb, and at the moment there are eight people in the team. So, um, why did I choose to suggest this as a project, um, as a presentation for this weekend? Well, we did some really interesting things with Joomla through this project. Uh, we did some things with Joomla we didn't think were possible at first. We were forced into a position where we had to solve some problems in new ways. Um, obviously, this is a spoiler alert for the last slide of the presentation, but it worked. Um, and uh, we were able to uh, show our client in this case, we we're able to show ourselves as a team and now I'm able to show you that you can do some pretty interesting things with Joomla that maybe that weren't clear that they were possible. So how did it start? Uh, we uh, have been working now for two and a half years for one very large client, it's an IT company um, and it all started at the beginning of 2016 and they came to us um, with one existing Joomla website, which had been built by someone who was not necessarily talented at building Joomla websites. Uh, they had built it very quickly and badly. They'd used a page builder template for it. Uh, and despite the fact that it wasn't the greatest success, it should be the basis for three or four more websites, which they also want to build quickly, uh, but that should look visually similar to that. Um, it's a big IT corporation, um, so it should have a common style, a common visual style between the websites. Um, and we knew from the start that there would be certain similarities in terms of layouts, layout elements, design elements between these sites. Um, that said, each of the sites should be for a separate subsidiary of this company, so there wasn't any need to have common content, there wasn't going to be any common structure between the sites. Um, we didn't have a lot of time to think about this at this moment, it was pretty much, can you build these sites by this date, and, and we said, maybe, and they said do it, and, and we did it. Um, and the first three or four sites were built, and they were completed, and the client was happy. We were happy, and we thought that that was the end of this story. Uh, but then the client turned around and gave us an evil smile and told us, now we'd like 15 more of those websites, please. Um, so the first reaction was a mix of horror, that how are we going to do that, uh, and happiness, we're going to make a lot of money. Um, <laughs> What we realized immediately with the experiences we'd had in the past of building multi-domain websites was we can't continue as we've done so far. With the three or four websites we'd already built, we'd taken each one as the quickest method, and then when it was finished, we made a copy of it, and another developer then sat at it and made changes. And then we made a copy of that, and we made changes. So it was thanks to Akiba Backup, we, we duplicated it, we made modifications, um, which as an approach for three or four websites, wasn't perhaps so bad, but what we realized was now we're gonna have 20 websites, um, and those 20 websites later are gonna be our responsibility to manage and maintain. So uh, continuing with that strategy definitely didn't feel like a good idea. We were able to make a convincing enough case to the client that uh, they should hold off at least a little bit with website number five and give us some time to make a proposal to them about how we would actually like to approach it. So, um, we wanted to think about the various approaches based upon the sites we built in the past, the projects we've worked in the past, how might we be able to achieve this. The first approach was, as I said, what we decided what we didn't want to do. So a simple extension of what we'd already done with the first four websites. Uh, each CMS is completely unique, completely separate, and at the end, when everything would be finished, we would have 20 individual junior CMSs, each with their own files, each with their own domain, um, with, with all of the advantages and disadvantages that brings with it. Um, we decided not to do that for various reasons, a couple of them I've already mentioned. Uh, it's not scalable in any way. It's very inefficient later to manage all of these websites. 
from what we'd learned from the client already and because of the similarities between these websites, we knew that later there's a good chance they'd come and say, well, now we want um, some new exciting design element. We want a layout element with flipping boxes. And on touchscreen, it does this. And on desktop, it does this. Um, but because of the similarities and the commonality between these websites, it's very likely that they would want that on all 20 of them at the same time. And if we install Joomla in 20 different places, with 20 instances, the only way we'd be able to, be able to achieve that <coughs> would be to um, roll out some code in 20 different places at once. Uh, also, the act of managing and maintaining them just in a purely administrative sense later would be difficult for a team of seven or eight people to manage. Um, and at the same time, we felt that it was a real missed opportunity because there were so many similarities between these sites. Um, because we had common layout elements, because we, because we had common layouts, um, because they were visually similar, they weren't identical, that's important. At this point, um, you can imagine various, some big corporation that has various sort of daughter websites, um, they look similar, you recognize that they all belong to the same corporation, but there are differences between them. So for example, website one looks like this, website two perhaps has all of the same design elements but a slightly different color scheme. Um, website three perhaps has rounded corners on the bottom but everything else is the same. Um, for each of these, these sites, for each of these projects, we would actually deal with, uh, to a degree, a different person. So each of these companies, each of these, let's say, clients for the individual websites wanted to bring some of their own ideas into it, but the corporation mostly said no to those. So um, we knew that there would be a lot of similar code between these websites, and we didn't want it to be duplicated in a redundant way. Uh, we also didn't want to get, be in a position where the code of these websites gradually drifted apart. So if we needed to implement a new layout element on 20 different websites, then uh, my only way as the boss of the agency of achieving that would be to ask two or three different developers to do it at the same time. And every developer has his own approach to these things. It might be as simple as the fact that the CSS would be put in a different order, or the files would be named differently. It might be that one of them chose a completely different approach. Um, and with the sort of time pressure on these projects, we knew very quickly we'd end up with a very big mess. So that was a no. Idea number two is something that we've done quite a few times in the past, but never for this number of websites. That's one Joomla installation, uh, and then pointing multiple domains at it. Um, I've done that in certain projects. We've done that for four or five websites, um, but in a very different situation, very different scenario with different client requirements. Um, in certain cases, it's certainly the right solution. There are various ways to achieve this. There are dedicated extensions for it um, with some pretty simple settings. In Joomla, you can achieve it without any extensions. Um, but in this case, too, we felt that it was the, the wrong approach. The main reason was it's not separate enough. Each of these websites will have its own content. And it will have its own navigation structure that may well not be similar to the other websites. Um, we need to have separate extensions on these websites. So for example, it's completely possible that website one will have an installation of AC mailing, sending newsletters to a certain group of recipients, and website four will be doing the same thing, but they want a different reply to email address, they want a different email layout, they want a completely different setup of settings for that extension, um, and very few, if any, extensions for Joomla make provisions for that. So we knew that although we could achieve that, we would be making significant workarounds, and again, here we saw the risk of moving into a place where we were doing things in a very complicated way and unmanageable way. Uh, the users, for example, each of these websites would later be maintained in terms of content by different client employees, which meant also we would have to keep the users separate. And these are all things that in Joomla are typically put in one place. One can manage that for three or four websites, but the moment it moves towards 10, 15, 20, we felt that uh, dividing in this way would actually make things more complicated, and it really wasn't an improvement on our original solution. Um, and the very scary sort of side effect of putting everything into one CMS is that it's very difficult to rule out that one user from one of these clients comes in and accidentally unpublishes the default menu item or a content item, and then with one click of, of one assistant to a C CEO of a company, 20 websites go offline. Um, we were willing to take on the risk that we could break 20 websites at one time, um, but we didn't want the client to be able to do it if possible. So this was also a no. So we scratched our heads and we thought about it over a couple of weekends. Um, we made some, some notes, we, we talked about some ideas that weren't good and what we ultimately came up with was a hybrid of those two solutions. So we would have, in fact, one CMS installation for each of the uh, client websites um, because that was necessary to, to maintain the degree of division between them. But at the same time, as is illustrated here in the ominous gray cloud, but it's a gray cloud that made us very happy later, 
uh, was that we could uh, imitate the, the, the file stores that each of these Joomla installations had in uh, a, an external location, so that each of these CMSs was loading files both from its local directory and also from a separate external directory. <coughs> um, big tick, yeah, this is the one we chose. Um, by default, these websites are separate. There's no connection between them. They have to all be on the same web server, and they have to be able to see each other by file path. Uh, but fundamentally, they are separate websites, which ticks the first box. So users, extensions are all separate. If only one of these 20 websites requires a certain extension, we're not forced to have it actually executed and loaded on all 20 websites um, and all of those other advantages. But we will be able to share things as we needed to. The first things that we were thinking about sharing were, as I'd mentioned, common CSS between these, these websites. Uh, so for the, for, the, for the bulk of styles and layouts, common JavaScript for some primary sort of interactions to do with the navigation and other things about the way that, that users interacted with the page, and PHP as regards layouts that were used in the, in the, in the page in general. Um, a big advantage, and actually something which, which helped us convince the client that they should invest more time and money in this on day one was that we told the client, when you come up with a new idea, in a year's time, because the client has a very strong desire to stay in their point of view at the cutting edge, when they come with a new layout element, it will automatically be available to all 20 websites if we do this right. So this was the idea, this is the pitch that we made to the client. It meant delaying the start of the project by six weeks, eight weeks, uh, and they agreed to it. So we had to make a plan. Um, what would be centralized, what wouldn't be centralized? Um, as I said in the right here, this is a repetition, extension settings, there was no need for that. Site content and structure, there were separate websites in that sense, so there was no need for that. Um, and for each website as well, we had site-specific JavaScript and CSS. So that is, website two is blue, website three has rounded corners, that sort of thing. But we had a great deal of commonality. So we had actual page layouts, so for the news section of the page, for the events section of the page, for the home page, we had very, very similar layouts that we were able to realize in one PHP file, or a collection of PHP files, and we were able to implement those, or we would centralize those across all of these sites. The same with the, the, oh, uh, with the common custom JavaScript and CSS. So that's our entire CSS base for these sites. Um, we uh, would also centralize some page builder add-ons. As I said, the first page was built with um, Joom Shaper's page builder. And uh, we used their add-on sort of structure, their add-on ecosystem to be able to add add-ons and modify them ourselves later. Um, so a list with icons down the left-hand side or maybe an accordion that opens or closes. We wanted to be able to use those in a custom way for this project. Um, so that was also something that we would centralize. Um, global language strings was a, an interesting challenge. I guess most people here know Joomla's uh, system for language overrides. Um, and we wanted to extend that to have a, an additional level, an override level, which would uh, be valid for all of these websites at once. So we could technically just, just define a language string, which would then immediately apply for all 20 websites. Um, and then boring stuff, files, PDFs, some images, that sort of thing. So how would we do this? What were the tools that we were going to use to actually make this possible? Well, in the end, it was actually relatively straightforward. It's one of those examples of a long thought process and planning process, but the actual methodology in the end is, is elegant and relatively straightforward. We would need, outside of all the Joomla installation, installation directories, um, a 21st directory um, with 20 websites, um, which we would build uh, mimicking the Joomla directory structure. Um, and we would uh, serve files from that directory in two ways. We would serve them by file path. So all of the other Joomla installations from PHP files, from JavaScript, were able to access these files by file path. So the web server had to be configured in that way. Uh, and the, cent the central domain, that's the second part from the same directory that we could also access CSS, JavaScript, images, by using a dedicated <coughs> URL. I've given an example here. It looks something like this. Um, that was also accessible to all of the, the websites. Um, so actually relatively straightforward. Um, and then it came to the implementation. So where did we start with that? Um, PHP. What did we actually centralize through this project? Um, because we started with separate websites uh, that we built, one of the first tasks we had was tidying everything up. Um, so we proved the, the, the legitimacy and the necessity of this idea relatively quickly when we realized how much of a mess we'd managed to build or create and just building four sites quickly and how different they were. Um, within the template, we centralized all of the main PHP files, so the actual central index PHP of the template, 
uh, error handling, the, the offline PHP file, and uh, the, the main component file. Um, we also uh, uh, centralized layout overrides, as I mentioned before. So for uh, uh, various extensions that we're using on all of these pages, the category blog layout, the individual article layout, things like that, we were able to move these to a central location and then actually edit them there. Um, page builder add-ons I mentioned. We also, for these websites, for all 20, we implemented a custom search solution. We didn't use Joomla for this uh, because one of the requirements in the search that the client wanted was that it was able to search non-Joomla websites. So um, we, ha, this is funny, um, about a year ago, we very proudly suggested to them that we would, just within maybe four or five development days, implement Google CSE for them. Um, so I don't know if anyone knows Google CSE. Any? No happy smiling faces. So um, a year and a half ago, the, the state of affairs was that Google would let you pay a certain amount a month, and they would give you access to the index data that they had of your websites, and you could present it in a white label way within your own websites. And it was served uh, using a simple API, I think as an XML file. So you could show search results, which had ultimately been delivered by Google. They do all the work. You point them at the websites, but you display those search results as your own search results. Um, which was a, a glorious solution. It was very easy to implement. Um, it was great documentation for Google. And then we were able within these websites to make it possible from any one of these websites to search that website, all 20 websites, and uh, also any other website that the client had as long as they had submitted it at the time to Google Webmaster Tools. So for them, that was absolutely great. The only problem with this was we finished the project. Everyone was happy. Um, and exactly to the day one month later, there was an email from Google which said, we're going to turn off Google CSE. We've decided we don't want to do it anymore. That's not our core business. We all know from Google they do great things and then turn them off without us really knowing why. And that was his case. Fortunately, they gave us a year to deal with this. So a month after the project finished, the, the happy faces turned into sad faces. Um, and we all set calendar of reminders in our Google calendars for exactly 10 and a half months from that date. And it was like, oh, at the start of February, we'll find another solution. Um, that was this year, but the layouts for that, uh, well, to finish that tiny aside, um, it turned out that Microsoft had an almost identical solution with Bing CSE, and actually moving it from Google to Bing was tremendously easy. It was another two days. So uh, there was a sort of a horror period of a few days where we weren't sure, and then we found this, and we spoke to the people at Bing, and it was a great solution. But for this particular purpose, what to be centralized? The layouts for rendering the search, the layouts for getting the data from the search, and the actual functionality for that also in PHP and JavaScript, which is an Ajax solution. All of that was common across all 20 websites, so we didn't want to implement it in 20 different places. So, um, how did we centralize the PHP files? Uh, we wanted to have as little as possible hard-coded into the individual PHP files. Essentially, Google wants to open a template. You tell Google, sorry, Joomla, this is the template that you're working with at the moment, and it opens that directory, and it looks for an index PHP file. Our solution was that Joomla should still find this index.php file, but where it expected to find 300 or 400 lines of fantastic code, it would find nothing. Uh, in, fa in fact, what it found was a finger pointing over there saying, if you want to find this file, it's over there. Have a look over there. Um, Joomla wasn't upset by that. That worked very well. And of course, the file that it was pointing at was located in the central directory. Um, so. One by one, these files, these PHP files within the Joomla installation were replaced, uh, we made neutral, and we pointed them at the central directory. Now, at this point, there was a, a slight challenge. The entire web server, a step back, the client that we're working for is an IT company. So um, even though we do the web design for them, they are software developers, and they have tens of thousands of employees. So uh, from their point of view, it was a logical thing that they would provide the entire web server infrastructure for us which in most cases has made our lives very easy, but the person that we deal with at the client that actually makes those decisions isn't a very nice guy. And now and again, just to make our lives, we think just to make our lives more interesting, he would come along and rename a directory, or he would change the way his system works, or he would deny his access to the error logs. It was every week a new challenge. So we were a little hesitant at this point to hard code the, the, the data, the file path, the directory path to the directory that we were gonna use for these PHP files uh, in all of these files. If you think about it, we've got 20 websites. If we had 20 PHP files in each website, that would be 400 files spread over 20 websites. Um, and if we had to change that later, it would be the sort of task where you can be fairly sure that someone will make a mistake. 
or one of those files would then deviate and they wouldn't be identical. So we came up with a solution for this, which allowed us not to have to put any sort of hard-coded file path references in 400 places, but only in 20 places. And that was that we created a new file called central.php, which was stored once, um, almost in the root directory of Joomla for each website. And in this file, we would put the, the hard-coded reference to the directory, but we only needed it once for each, each um, Joomla installation. And then the process was Joomla would look and say, well, hang on, I've got an error. It's a 404. I need error.php, please. And it would open the file. And in the file, it would find nothing except a finger pointing at this file. And it would take the file name with it. And in this file, it would be told, OK, take your file name and look over here. So this is the only place where we had a reference to this central data directory. And then it would open this file. And I think this is a slide. This is my only slide with code on it. So if you like code, you should enjoy this moment. Um, each, of the <laughs> each of the individual PHP files that we called shells look like this. So uh, it contained nothing apart from a variable which grabbed the current file name um, and then a reference to the central PHP file. And in that file, uh, and this is the highlighted part, this is the only part of this solution then that was really hard coded, we had a, a, a definition of a variable for the actual directory that it should be looking at and everything else was just there to actually load this file. I should leave a pause for you to enjoy the code. <laughs> OK. Um, and again, we, we went through various complex solutions before we came to this. Uh, and again, we were quite stunned when it worked as well as it did. But we were happy because we had a simple solution. And it was elegant in most re regards. JavaScript and CSS. As I said, some of the code was shared. And some of the code was site specific. So what we decided to do was to have a single, if you'd say it's normally custom.css, we would have a sim single custom file for each website, um, and we would have a single global custom, uh, global CSS file which was loaded by all 20 websites. So each of these websites would first load the global CSS file, and then it would load its own specific CSS file. Um, and that gave us um, a situation in which each of these sites, when it was installed, would look like the cookie cutter corporate website, but we had an override mechanism specifically for that site. Uh, and we followed the same approach for JavaScript as well. Um, as I'd said, uh, it was stunning how much mess we had managed to make in two months. So four sites that for the user looked almost identical, it, it was chaos. One of my colleagues, someone in the team, was given the task uh, on his third or fourth day in the team of tidying up the CSS. We thought it would take a week. It took about a month and a half. Um, many CSS files, lots of identical code, but in different orders. Uh, lots of different solutions to the same problems, and all of these websites were online. Um, and I stress, and I'll talk about this at the end of the presentation, at this moment we still hadn't thought about, considered, or implemented any sort of proper development or, or, or staging workflow for these sites. Um, so we were able to do things offline, but the clients were working on the site at the same time, and there was a tremendous time pressure through all of this. So a, a month and a half later, the CSS was identical. It was split cleanly into global and, C and, and local for each website. Um, and the file path structure looked a little bit like this. So uh, this is in our central directory outside of any of the actual Joomla installations that we had the templates folder with the name of the actual template, which isn't really my temp. We had the CSS directory, and then we had a file which is called global CSS. So this is roughly the same as the normal custom CSS file that we'd use if you want to overwrite a Joomla template. Um, and then we had an additional directory which we created, and for every site we implemented we had a separate CSS file, this list continues to 20, um, which was loaded as the, the leading and the most high priority CSS file for that website. And this was reproduced for JavaScript in exactly the same way. Okay, what else did we centralize? Well, one of the nice things about the solution that we came up with, we were able to do this step by step. So our first tasks were dealt with. Um, we then looked at these sites, and, and bit by bit, on good days, we were able to convince our client that we should perhaps centralize other stuff. Uh, we did get a little bit high on the idea of centralization, so there were some moments where we centralized some stuff and realized later that, that has no benefit. Maybe we should wind back. And we didn't charge, of course, the client for that work. Uh, but we learned a lot from it. Um, I don't know, Peter van Westen, if he's here this weekend, um, a really nice guy. Uh, we use a lot of his extensions in a lot of different ways. And we like them because it gives us great flexibility and you can really do cool things with them. Re-Replacer is one of them. Uh, does anyone know Re-Replacer? Yeah. yeah? Good, a lot of nods this time. So the main use on these websites that we use Re-Replacer for is imitating sort of the sort of short codes that you'll be familiar with from WordPress. 
which gives us the chance of letting our client insert certain bits of dynamic text into their, their articles or their, their news items. Um, one of the classic ones that we usually implement is year in square or squiggly brackets that in the footer, for example, allows us to use PHP to give the current year. So at the end of the year, we don't have to go through all of the client websites and change it in footer. Um, but many, many examples like this, this is just the most primitive one. And again, they were similar or exactly the same across these websites. We didn't want to actually store them individually in each site separately. Um, one of the things that happened was on one of the sites, one of the developers decided to use square brackets. And then we had a client asking us, well, hang on, I put year. I thought I understand your complicated code world. And I put squiggly brackets and it didn't work. I did something wrong. Um, and it turned out, in fact, that the developer had done something wrong. Of course, we didn't admit that. It was Juno's fault. Uh, but what we wanted to do here was, again, bring all of these together in one place. Now, re-replacer from day one offered an option for, you can define these re-replacer rules within the extension, and then they're stored in the database of that particular Joomla installation. But from day one, you could also actually load an external XML file instead, and you could define your rules in a really nice way in this file. Now, at this point, we decided that would actually work for us. We tried it out. It worked really, really well. Um, the only problem with it was there was no way of creating this XML structure automatically. Ideally, it would be that you create the rules in, in ReReplacer and you press export and you put your nice XML file and you put it in a central location and you point all of the websites at it and then you can go home early. Um, it didn't work like that because ReReplacer allowed this XML file to be loaded, but it did not give you any method of creating automatically. And I think it was created by Peter Van Besten one motivated Monday morning, uh, and it was implemented, and I don't think anyone else has ever used it. Um, it worked fine, but there was no documentation for it. Uh, so we asked him, would it be possible that he added the feature, the functionality that we could export as XML? Um, and I met him in Rome. He didn't reply to my emails. <laughs> then I met him in Rome, and I, and I bought him a beer, and then he said, yeah, sure. And he actually did it that day at the conference. So whichever presentations he went to, he wasn't listening. He was coding, and I received an email that evening before the Rome conference was finished that it worked. And it did work, it worked gloriously, and that allowed us to centralize these very quickly. So we had, first of all, everything harmonized across all the websites. Uh, and more importantly, when we added new shortcodes in the future, they were available on all of these websites. So if the client said, actually, we'd like a chance to insert a company name that might change later, can we use a shortcode for it, can we make it dynamic, then we were able to implement that in one place. And then all of a sudden, it was available on all 20 websites. What else? Um, I mentioned earlier global language strings. So uh, the class function JText, um, I think most people knows how, know how, how it, knows how it works, um, that it's possible, first of all, there are standard text strings variables defined in Joomla. So when you install it from day one, you can override those uh, either by editing a TXT file or you can do it through the panel under extensions languages. Um, and then it automatically creates that TXT file. But what we wanted was to go one level further and be able to have a third level so that we could have language strings defined that were accessible to all of these sites. Uh, our solution for this, and I won't go into it in detail today, was basically to, to, to mimic the functionality of JTEXT. We created our own plugin, um, which worked exactly like JTEXT, only that it loaded or it looked in the, in the, global, de um, the global directory first um, and used those files if they were there. So we had a, a three-tiered override structure. We had on the lowest level, the, the Joomla default strings. The next level up, we had the strings that were defined globally, and then the top level, we had the local strings. So you could still override those on the local site. Um, and in the end, in our templates, we ended up with this sort of notation, which is identical with JTEXT, but JTTEXT. That worked nicely. So to tie this all together, um, a year and a half passed. Um, 20 websites were implemented. Uh, we had some bumps along the road, some things that didn't work. Um, but essentially, we managed to prove that this was possible. Um, we were happy in the fact that we were able to demonstrate that Joomla could be used for something like this, which at least we'd never seen before. Um, and that we were able to convince the client that Joomla could be used in this way, sort of as an enterprise CSS, CMS. Uh, the challenge with this client was that they were thinking about as an option, alternative to Joomla, immediately moving to an enterprise CMS system. So part of our challenge in this entire project was showing that that wasn't necessary, at least not in the short term. And that worked. Now there are 25 websites. Um, in our team, we're able to manage these websites in a way that otherwise would never have been possible. And there's very little mess, some mess. Um, we had a meeting with this client where all of the 20 different companies or, or departments came together. We had one representative for each one. It was in Munich, it was 
last year with one of my colleagues who went then to train them on how to use these websites. We did lots of other stuff. We've used Joomla custom fields, so they have their own content types and they have their own layout in the back end. So we were training them and um, what we learned from that meeting was that all of them in the meantime have become massive fans of Joomla, which was a fringe benefit of the whole, whole thing. And this is true, one of the ladies at that conference who I think might otherwise be a little unusual actually stood up and shouted, I love Joomla. Uh, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe someone paid her to do it, I don't know, but it made us very happy um, and it was unexpected. Um, and obviously for us, in terms of lobbying, to keep working for this client, having all of their staff that work with the system happy is one of the biggest successes we could have expected. Um, but we did some stuff wrong and we learned some stuff from the project as well. As I said earlier, um, we didn't want to create a situation in which the client was able to break all of these websites at once. If you have commonality between websites and those common elements are broken, then all of the websites are broken. Um, we knew from the start going in, though, of course, if we've got shared PHP files, CSS files, we will definitely have that ability ourselves. The superpower of breaking a lot in a very short time. And typically at the end of Friday before everyone goes away for the weekend. We knew this was a risk and still it happened several times. I'm not going to count them. Um, so the relationship with the clients sort of suffered a little bit from that, but we, we dealt with it. And what we realized pretty quickly was if we're going to manage this many websites, then we will need some sort of defined deployment workflow that works for this particular scenario that includes a sta staging and a live server and makes it easy for both technical and non-technical people in our team to manage all of the various steps in that process and also to document the changes we've made. Um, so that was our next project. We couldn't get the client to pay us for this. But we did do it, and it was a lot of fun, and it took us a couple of months, and my colleague who's sitting in the back, I won't point to him, uh, led most of the work on that, and he'll be presenting at least part of that today at four o'clock, much to his consternation in the big room. Um, so we mainly used the software Akiba Unite for that. We came up with a great solution. At the moment, we're thinking about what else we could do with that in the future. And that is that. Um, thank you. Any questions? Lots of questions. Okay. Uh, oh. Lots of questions here. How is the performance difference between one CMS for 20 websites and 20 CMSs for 20 websites? Um, I would imagine that if you use one CMS for 20 websites, as I mentioned before, as a disadvantage, you have to have all of the extensions that you're going to use, all of the code you're going to use on all those websites loaded in any particular one moment, um, which will slow the website down a little bit. Um, since we never actually went down that road, it's difficult to actually give any other concrete or specific examples of that. Um, but yeah, certainly in terms of the extensions, I mean, all of the content, I, I can't comment on the degree to which having a very, very full Joomla database or having 20 different menu structures in one website would slow it down on the front end, um, but I imagine that it would have some effect on it. Um, so yeah, oh, do I need your password? <laughs> Did you consider using a custom Joomla file package installation so you could propagate, oh Jesus, so you could propagate updates to the site using a Joomla updater? No, but we will now. Thank you, someone. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, we were pleased with the solution we came up with, but um, we, through this project, we grew from an agency with four people to an agency with eight or nine people. Um, and so a lot of the stuff that looks clever here and looks simple and elegant came with quite a lot of blood and sweat, and we learned a lot of this stuff as we were doing it. So I think both in terms of that question and in terms of probably other elements or aspects of it, there are probably things in the future we will continue to improve on this, but that's a good idea, I'll take that. Uh, these replaced local PHP files, was that done with symbolic links? No, it wasn't, might also be a good idea. No, it was done with the, the code that I displayed earlier, it was yeah. done with these ghost files. I, I, I learned from it while you told it. Ah, uh, okay. Initially okay. I thought symbolic links, but yeah. I think your solution is better. Oh, good. Okay, uh, and any other questions from, yeah? Uh, how's the practical workflow when there's a Joomla update? So you definitely have to uh, yeah. update the centralized and you still have to uh, update uh, 20 individual sites? We use Watchful for that, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we don't, we thought about that. Uh, there was no way in this particular solution of, of, of combining these updates. And also since actually for each of these sites, we deal ultimately with a different company. It's a family, but. I'm just happy that you have the solutions that just came into my mind. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. We're super happy with Watchful. It actually makes it all really, really easy. Yeah. Since there are different extensions also installed in different sites, there's enough difference between the sites that actually I don't think that we'd think about harmonizing that process. 
without something like Watchful, it would be incredibly tedious. So we're glad that it exists. Yeah. Uh, actually, two. Okay. Uh, first one is you talked about the CSE uh, yeah. moving from Google to Bing. Have yeah. you looked at using like Elasticsearch? We did. We did. We did look into it. Um, we, in the end, uh, and we researched it, we spent a day and a half, two days looking into Elasticsearch. We didn't know it until then, so it wasn't something we were familiar with. We certainly not used it in another project. Um, our conclusion, uh, or our decision to use Bing was ultimately motivated by the fact that moving from Google to, to be a Bing would take the client two or three days of development, or take us, whereas any sort of additional solution would involve thinking about, we would have to index the sites ourselves, yeah. we'd have to present it ourselves. Did so. It, 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 absolutely, but it's, it was a question of how many resources we had at the time. What actually happened from that is we also came into contact with the Common Core directory. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know it, so which is, I think, connected in some ways with Elasticsearch, which is this vast sort of indexed millions or petabytes each month. Um, so it actually got us interested in Elasticsearch, but we felt it wasn't right, or the client felt we didn't want to pay that much money, ultimately. Mm -hmm. and, and we already had the Google solution, and moving from Google to Bing really was very painless. The way they work, the data they deliver, the form they deliver it in was almost yeah. identical. And in, in, in that respect, it, we couldn't have in good conscience recommended to the client any other solution. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So my question, the second question about the JT text. Yeah. It's, you just have to plug in so you can read the language file from a different folder? From a folder, uh, from a directory which is outside of the current Joomla installation, yeah. Okay, because I was thinking with, uh, if you load the language Helper in Joomla, you can specify which directory to look for language files. Yeah. No, that didn't work. Yeah. That didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was wondering. He programmed that, so that question would go to him. <laughs> we, I, think we, I think that was our first solution in terms of the idea that we could simply then slightly modify that, or, um, but uh, we, that it didn't work, okay. what, what he said. Thank <laughs> you. Um, what, what, just think of your code, code example, what, um, what made you choose to use uh, include rather than require or uh, in the code that I showed mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but you know whether it would be quite, I, quietly failing or I, I have to be honest this was something that we came up with two years ago oh, uh, I, I can't answer that specifically at the moment it executes it immediately and Google just reads the file doesn't even execute and it's not that really restrictive you know it's not included you just get some warning no big deal <laughs> <laughs> Most of the questions can go to Zara. <laughs> Any more questions? We're good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was there a difference between uh, Google and Bing when you had to change to Bing? Not really. <laughs> it handles, uh, so some of these, I didn't mention this, but some of these websites are also in multiple languages. Uh, we had a lot of websites, most of them in German, some of them are in German and English, uh, with a different lead language or a different first language. And recently we implemented a site which has now got six or seven, it's Russian and, and, and Polish. And as I remember, the filtering method that Bing gives you to be able to filter by language is slightly more refined. But I would say 95% uh, of the experience is the same. Um, if you're interested and you want to send me your details, we're actually going to write a blog article about that later in the summer. Because it was an interesting process, both the implementation of Google and then the switch to Bing. So I'd be happy to send you the details of that when it comes in. Cool.